what can I help you with, Sharper? This haunted bloody box turns up on my doorstep and attacks me. I mean, I know Amazon service can be shitty at times, but Jesus. Anyway, when I opened it up, what did I find? A Beast Machine scavenger. I don't know whether someone's playing a sick joke or what, but that shouldn't have come. And I know you know a lot about Beast Machine, so I was wondering whether you could help me shed some light on this thing. Certainly. Beast Machines was a direct sequel to Beast Wars. A very strange one at that. It focused on the conflict between technological and organic life. The Maximals were represented as techno-organic beast machine creatures. A sort of uh, fusion of robot and animal. Uh, whereas the evil forces, the Viacons, were uh, an army of drones led by three respective commanders. You had the tank drones led by Tankor, the motorcycle drones led by Thrust, and the aerial drones led by Jetstorm. The series um, divided fans, rather, and it could be illustrated as follows. I am the upper-class intellectual Transformers fan. I like Beast Machines, and I look down on you because you like Beast Wars. And I am lower class. I like Beast Wars because it's simple. I look up to him because he is my better. So where does Scavenger fit into the scheme of things? Well, the answer is, uh, he doesn't. He was intended to be in Beast Machines from what I know, but uh, was replaced by another character at the last moment. The Beast Machines toy line is notoriously inaccurate to the animation models, and is also inaccurate to the characters that appeared in the show. Which is a shame, because Scavenger's a wonderful little henchman. If you look at him, he's strangely actually quite lanky, but because of the height of his shoulders, the bulk of the torso with this minigun and rockets flanking this uh, tiny little pop-up head with its sunroof light piping, and the fact that he has these tank treads on the legs to bulk them out a bit, it makes him look very squat and uh, very like... Don't make me clip, you want. And despite the way I got him, he's... Uh great little figure. He's a lovely, generic little thug. He's got gorgeous colours, an interesting look, and some delicious chrome. He's adorable little cannon fodder to be army built en masse. And given how easily and cheaply you can get hold of one of these, about three quid on eBay, it'd actually be pretty easy to do. I'd love to do a little uh, army build of these with the robots in disguise scavenger repaint as the leader. It's in his vehicle mode that things really start to get interesting for me. Let's transform this bad boy. Lightning strikes! There's a power that comes from deep inside of you Does every day reach and toward the light And you know there's a long way ahead of you But when your wheels get you there Now here's a real beast machine. Scavenger transforms into this wicked Cybertronian construction vehicle, or destruction vehicle as they say on his bio. And he's pretty damn awesome. If you remember the 1980s cartoon, Jason the Wheeled Warriors, this guy reminds me of a monster mind, particularly the Terror Tank. Just a grotesque engine of destruction with an organic maw. That's one thing I really like about this dude, the fact that his mouth can emote undergrowth. And hell, I'd wager that the designers were thinking of Jason the World Warriors when they were designing this little dude. When you take a look at the concept art, it's hard not to see the similarities. Sawboss and Megatron on opposite sides of a techno-organic war would be pretty fucking awesome. And I bet there's some really bad fanfic written about it. Or there will be fanfic. It's peculiar they were going for destruction drone with this alt mode, because alongside the uh, weaponry aside his giant, gaping, and puppetable mouth, uh, there are definite hints of uh, construction vehicle here. It's the, the orange and the fact you've got this little cockpit that looks like it came straight off a backhoe digger. You've got... Uh, the Allegiant Crystal in there, just in case you wonder. But 
I don't know. It it looks almost like a bomb disposal vehicle. It's got minesweeper claws. For something that's supposed to be all about destroying, he looks almost downright helpful. I don't really mind though, because for such a, a simple uh, scout class figure, the transformation's quite complete. You know, you don't feel um, gypped at all. It's it's quite a brilliant little alt mode, and I like. The, although uh, alt modes that aren't real life ones, the ones that are usually Cybertronian, in other words, made up, they're generally kind of rubbish. This just perfectly fits in the Beast Machines aesthetic. It's definitely a Beast Machines Viacon. It's such a shame he never made it into the show. This would have been a fantastic thing. It's just so expressive, especially in uh, both modes. I mean, that was one of the big things I liked about Beast Machines. You had uh, Jetstorm with the cockpit that could kind of move around like he was looking about. The sort of uh, personality they gave the vehicle forms was wonderful. And this guy would have been a, an excellent addition. As it is, he's a cheap and brilliant vehicle mode, a cheap and brilliant robot. He's a great little toy. This has been great, Colin. I really appreciate your help on this. I mean, sure it hasn't revealed the origins of this thing, but you've helped me shed some light on this little guy, and it's been an absolute pleasure, sir. Glad to be of help, and if you ever need any more help, you know who to call. Ghostbusters. No. Me. From Mint and Box, I've been Sharpo. And from my channel Master Smasher Presents, I have been and remain Colin. See you around.